But the world is not um, in great shape, you know, it's, uh, especially the U.S. I think, um, I do think that investing in real estate is a long-term game. And when I started in 91, um, we were buying from the RTC. Today we're, well, the chorus deal was bought from the FDIC. Sort of added a, a letter, but it's still a government agency. Um, and uh, the principles that I was so excited about in 91 when I started my firm are back in play 20 some odd years later. And what again. three key principles would those be? You're buying below replacement cost in the US, which is a big deal. Good. Thank you. I'm that's glad you the, like that's that the number one thing? Or, or you got a couple more? Or? I got two more. Okay. Uh, you have positive leverage if you can get leverage at all. So you're, if, you, if you buy it as even an eight yield, then you can borrow at six. You, you can get a 10 cash on cash or a nine and a half, 10, which is compelling relative to the other asset classes, the fixed income, um, governments, even corporates, even junk bonds. And you just wait. And eventually, in a growth country like the United States, which we are still growing, people forget that unlike Western Europe, unlike Japan, we have demographic growth here. So eventually, you know, if you're certainly a patient investor, growth will bail you out, unless you're investing in Detroit. So if you're in Detroit, you're probably not in great shape. But um, there, are, there are, even in places like Albany, you can make money. So it's a great industry, the real estate industry, because it is the last great imperfect market. You're sitting over the epicenter of the perfect market. You know, the, the, but real estate, it's not that hard. I mean, it, it, you have to keep common sense is really important, which most people seem to lose in the real estate cycles um, because they get access to both equity and debt capital. But at the end of the day, it is the most practical application of common sense probably in investing. Well, especially if you're buying property instead of just pieces of paper, trading back and forth, which you, you do a little both though, don't you? We, we do both. <laughs> and they both take common sense. <laughs> but I was once when I was younger, I'm going to pretend I'm still young. I saw a sign at a Holiday Inn that said, uh, it was one of those billboards and it said, common sense is very uncommon. And I really believe that. I mean, it's, um, it's amazing how, as we look at the chorus assets, which are 102 construction projects all over the country, some of the stuff that was built is inexplicable. You know, like in the, in the you know, 40 miles from the nearest Indian reservation, and it's a high rise. And all you see are tumbleweed. So you kind of wonder, did the loan officer ever come out to the site? Um, and those, Field of dreams. Those are the problems. You know, those are the problems when um, the basics of real estate are forgotten. They build two-story retail. I learned that when I was six years old, that the second story of retail only rents on a pro forma for a banker, right? And, yeah. um, I'm impressed that at age six you knew the phrase <laughs> for, pro forma. I did. Um, <laughs> and, and, well, all right, so we heard a couple reasons for why you're investing now and why it looks good. Tell us two or three key things that worry you about the economy and whether we We'll have a second dip or whether we actually will Th This rebuild. is not. I mean, people look at, then you see this is the fastest, second fastest recovery in history since the, you know, the, the second largest dip and the second fastest recovery. I think fundamentally this is a different economy than it was any other recession that we've come out of. Better or worse? Well, different and worse because you're, you're, it's being powered by government spending and not by private market spending. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, I, I used the analogy the other day of it's a lake, a thin lake or a lake with a thin layer of ice on it. And some people came out and started to dance, and other people looked at them and said, they're not falling through the ice, and they came out. And it's a race between how fast the ice will get thick, how fast right. the economy will strengthen, and whether the weight of all these people now losing all their risk um, focus that they had the last 12 months are now just piling on top of the lake because everyone's got to be in the market. Have we really Nobody forgotten wants to that sit quickly? On, it looks that way. Yeah, I would say we're forgetting very fast. You know, in ice corporate fishing. Corporate bonds, you know, corporate bonds, the, the real estate deals are trading faster and faster. The discipline of reading the documents, what these um, documents say in the fine print is, again, you're not having time to do. There's a tremendous global search for yield and it's driving prices and yields and it's supporting the market probably at, certainly in real estate way ahead of the fundamentals. So, so the low government rates allow me not to do any research and just rely on Moody's. Right. Well, it? well I, and that's not Moody's. I mean you, you have uh, in, in 1991, 2 and 3 the REIT industry was really born when borrowers went public because they were going to go broke. Right? Everyone was recourse. Mr. Toll knows this with, with me, that BIs were recourse on debt instead of going, uh, David Simon isn't here, I was with him yesterday, but his, I remember seeing his father, Mel, who should rest in peace, just passed away in the office of my boss, crying, tears coming down his cheeks because uh, ca uh, bonds were trading at like nine, but the, that was government treasuries, but, but cap rates were six. So he was worth billions on paper. And then all of a sudden, malls were worth 10, and he had debt at nine, and he was broke. 
And how did he get out of being broke? He went public. And the market short rates were so low that a yield of 5 or 6% on a mall uh, looked pretty good to the public. And the retail guys stepped in and, and, and re-equitized the real estate industry. And that's, how, that's the dirty little secret of how the real estate industry was born, um, the REIT industry. And it's happening again. I mean, we did a blind pool this summer. We raised just cash. But I, everywhere I go now, I hear about 43 different IPOs of anybody with any asset thinks they can go public. And probably at the moment, with the discipline or lack thereof in the public markets, you can do that.